Hello, all of my ninth standard young friends. This is the annual examination, that is the pre-board examination paper of class 9, 2020, which means the pre-board's examination that finished this year in the month of February 2020. This is the mathematics paper. paper is for two and a half hours and also with first 15 minutes given to you to read thoroughly and then we have two sections we have section a which is 40 marks section a has four questions each 10 marks so question one to question four they will be of 10 marks each mostly the marking scheme is three three and four marks Okay, then our section 2 will have 7 questions. We have to attempt any 4 of them. So when we get our first 15 minutes, ideally you should read section B first and decide on which questions we want to attempt, where we will lose the least marks and then we come to question number 1. Now, are we ready to solve the question paper? Let's begin. Our question 1 of section A starts with rationalizing. Can you see this 4 upon root 5 plus root 3? We have to simplify this and find the value of this fraction. And we have been given root 5 and root 3 values. So how we start with this by rationalizing this fraction. So we have written the question down. Now we will write the fraction the way it is given. And because the denominator is of the form a plus b, we will rationalize it with the form a minus b, which means root 5 minus root 3. And the numerator also will be just the same. That will give us in the denominator root 5 whole square minus root 3 whole square. Because we are using a plus b into a minus b equal to a square minus b square. And in the numerator we have That will now simplify it as 4 into root 5 minus root 3 upon root 5 whole square is 5 root 5 into root 5 minus root 3 whole square is root 3 into root 3 which is 3. That would give us 4 into root 5 minus root 3 upon 2. 2 ones and 2 twos will give us now, just to save on space, I am going to make a column. In the exam, please continue to write one step below the other. But here, just to save on space, I will use the column. So, it will now become 2 into bracket root 5 minus root 3. Now, this apparently is the answer if they had not given us these values. So, now we will have... 2 into root 5 is 2.236 minus 1.732. So it becomes 2 into bracket 6 minus 2 that is 4. 3 minus 3 0. And when we multiply by 2 and this is our answer. Let us look at question number 1b. If x minus 1 upon x is equal to 1 upon 3, evaluate x cubed minus 1 upon x. And now let us solve this. We have been given x minus 1 upon x is equal to 1 upon 3 and we want x cubed minus 1 upon x cubed. So we will have to take the cube of both sides. So we use the formula for a minus b whole cube a cube minus b cube minus 3ab into bracket a minus b. This is the formula for a minus b whole cube equal to. So this is our thinking step. We will use just this and we will now write our next step. Therefore, x cube minus 1 upon x cube minus 3 into x into 1 upon x into x minus 1 upon x 
and that is 1 upon 3 whole cube, 1 cube is 1, 3 cube is 27. Now we have therefore x cube minus 1 upon x cube minus it will be 3 into bracket x minus 1 upon x which is 1 upon 3 and that is so as you can see we have this minus 1 transfer this side you will have 1 plus 27 in the numerator that gives us 28 upon 27 which is the answer but we will write it actually as 1 and 1 upon 27 we convert it into a mixed fraction and we write it as a answer. Question 1c in the given figure ABC is the triangle D is the midpoint of BC AD produced 2E let us look at the diagram AD is produced 2E can you see that AD is produced to E and BM and CN are two perpendiculars dropped from B and C. Can you see that BM and CN they are the perpendiculars dropped on AE. We have to prove that triangle BMD is congruent to triangle CND and the second bm equal to cn question 1c we have drawn the diagram we have bm perpendicular to ae and cn is perpendicular to ae and we write what is given like so and what is to be proved and then we will have the statements and the reasons columns statement number one saying d is midpoint of bc which is given Statement number 2, BM is perpendicular to AE. Statement number 3, CN is perpendicular to AE and all this is given. Statement number 4, we take BMD triangle which I will show with the dot and CND triangle which will be shown with the tick mark here and you will see that this is 90 and this is 90 in these two triangles and then we will have these two angles which are vertically opposite and D is the midpoint of BC so this is equal to this so it is your AAS or you can write it as SAA so let us write in triangle BMD and triangle CND Now you pause this video and write down the angles which are 90 degrees and here I am writing the reason BM perpendicular to AE, CN perpendicular to AE which is statement 2 and 3. Now look at your answer it is BMD, BMD sorry is equal to angle CND, CND which is 90 then we come to statement number 5 again pause it the two angles which are vertically opposite okay now check your step it will be m d b and n d c did you get it right good statement number 6 we will have b d equal to c d this will be because of statement number 1 because D is the midpoint, correct? And 7th statement, therefore, can you see this is your A, this is your A and this is your S. The test for congruency, triangle BMD is congruent to triangle CND and this will be because of statement 4, 5, 6 and AAS test for congruency, alright? this is your proved first part okay now we have to prove that bm and cn they are equal now these two sides are opposite these vertically opposite angles can you see that so they are the corresponding sides and corresponding sides of congruent triangles will be equal statement number eight therefore bm is equal to cn and this will be from statement 7 
and C, B, C, D, C corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent and that is your proved to and we put it in a box and so we have finished with question number one. Question 2a says evaluate and this is given this is from chapter indices and so we are going to just copy this and we are going to use the laws of exponents and we are going to solve this. We have minus 1 upon 4 bracket to the power minus 2 minus 3 into this we will write as 2 to the power 3 and that to the power 2 third multiplied by 4 to the power 0 is 1 and plus it will be here 3 to the power 2 16 is 4 to the power 2 and the whole bracket is to the power minus half that is equal to now we are going to make this negative power into positive by making a reciprocal of this because x to the power minus m will be 1 upon x to the power m right so it will be minus 4 upon 1 to the power 2 minus 3 and now this and this will multiply so we will write it like so this multiplied by 1 does not make any difference here this is again negative power so we'll make it as positive so 4 square upon 3 square bracket to the power half this gives us minus 4 square becomes 16 minus this gets cancelled 3 multiplied by 2 to the power 2 and plus here this is 4 upon 3 bracket to the power 2 and that to the power half so we will have 16 minus 3 into 4 plus this will be now 2 into half will get multiplied and we will have plus 4 upon 3 that is 16 minus 12 plus 4 upon 3 that gives us 16 minus 12 is 4 so it will be 4 plus 4 upon 3 is 1 1 third you can take LCM also not a problem so I am just going to stop at this and this is our answer so here we have question to be using ruler and compass only construct rhombus ABCD with AB equal to 6 centimeters diagonal AC 7 centimeters and hence measure and write down the length of the diagonal BD so first we will draw the rough diagram I'm just going to show a rhombus each side is 6 cm it was given to us and diagonal AC is 7 cm once we draw the diagram like this it is easier for us to understand the construction we will draw AB first then we'll take the radius 6 cm draw the arc 7 cm draw the arc so you'll get your point C from here we'll take 6 cm from a, we will take 6 centimeters where they intersect that will be a point D and then we join this okay so let us see how we can do this that is your 6 centimeters now we will take the radius equal to let's check this is it 6? Okay, so we've taken 6 centimeters as the side. Now we will take 7 centimeters as the radius. There it is 7. And now keep the point of compass at A and draw an intersecting arc. So you see I should have taken longer arc so this is our point C from C we need uh, this is six centimeters yes so from here six centimeters we draw the arc 
and from A 6 centimeters we draw the intersecting arc. So we have this is point D. Now we will join We write the measures and we are asked to find the length of diagonal BD. Now because AC we have taken as 7 centimeters, I shall show this as dashed line and diagonal BD we have to measure. So I will draw that diagonal and let us measure. I'm getting it as 9.6 or 9.7. It is between that. So we will write it as 9.7 centimeter and we will say BD equal to 9.7 centimeter. Now your examiner will have to give you marks even if it is 9.6 that you have written because it is between 9.7 and 9.6 for me. So plus and minus a little bit of error is still agreeable and you will not lose your marks for that. Let us come to question number 2c. Mr. Ram borrows rupees 20,000 for two years compounded annually. The rate of interest for two successive years are 9% and 10% respectively. If he repays rupees 1,200 at the end of first year, 1,660 at the end of second year, find the amount outstanding at the beginning of the third year. So we've written the data here. The principal that is the amount borrowed is 20,000 times two years. R1 that is the rate for the first year is 9%. R2 is 10% per annum, amount repaid after one year is 1200, amount after second year repaid is 1660 and we have to find out amount outstanding at the beginning of third year. So for something like this, I prefer to do P1 that is principal for the first year, that is rupees 20,000, then your I1 is going to be 9%, so I will say I1 will be PRT upon 100 which is 20,000 multiplied by 9 into 9 to 18 so we have the interest as 1800 and so the amount after first year is rupees correct now we are going to have amount repaid after first year 1200 so we will have amount outstanding will be we'll have to subtract this from here correct now this becomes the principal for the second year so let us see how we do that your principal for the second year is rupees 20600 and the interest for the second year will be rate for the second year is 10% second year means time is 1 so the interest is 2060 and so we'll have the amount at the end of two years. The second year it's going to be like so and now we will have amount repaid is going to be rupees 1660. So amount outstanding will be when you subtract this from this so it will be 0, 0, 0. Now we want the amount outstanding. If you look at the question, we need amount outstanding at the beginning of the third year. It means end of second year. Amount outstanding at the end of the second year, which means beginning of the third year. So 21,000 is your answer. I'm going to end this video here and the remaining part of the paper I'm going to soon solve and put it up. In the meantime, look out for my online course. Keep looking for the link in the description box. Thank you for watching.